Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Bianca Imani, and I'm back again with another story time. Sorry, I can't do y'all like this. I'm gonna tell y'all about the time I quit my job, walked out with no pro like no no second job, just that one job I was working at, walked out, left in the beginning of my work day with no given none whatsoever because my boss tried to play me all in my bag i'm making a bad i walk in the bank i'm hitting my dad pockets is fat a couple of stacks I'm spending it all i'm making it back i get the green what do you mean get to the cash you know i'm a fiend you know we lit me and my team that's how i go when we step to the scene step to the scene I'm all right so boom this is how it happened so i used to work for a company called I won't say it because <laughs> I don't want to get nobody in trouble. I don't want nobody coming after me. But I used to work for this after school program in Crown Heights. And it was okay Um, in the beginning. It took me a long time to start. Like the hiring process takes forever. I applied in like September, October-ish. Like the same day I got fired from Starbucks, I went and I had an interview for them. So, you know, I was impressed. Um, and I had the interview that was in October and I did not start my first day until the beginning of January. It was such a long, tedious process. Like, I don't even know why it took so long, to be honest, but whatever. So after I got hired, you know, first of all, this is a story within a story because the girl that my ex in ninth grade was cheating on me with is the same girl that was sitting across the table from me at orientation and i was like oh hell nah this world is way too small for this chick to be sitting across from me like she wasn't with my man i don't know whose man he was first but shit it didn't matter because neither of us wanted him at the end we both up and he is down but i'm not gonna talk about nobody's downfalls but we was young and dumb, running behind these stupid boys, and I'm glad we both got out of that bad situation. You know, we both ended up getting pregnant at the same time, not by him, <laughs> but by our guys. And seeing her was so weird, because I'm like, I've never seen her in person. I just know her as the guy, the girl that was with Kahim when I was with him. But that's neither here nor there. So that was awkward off rip. I was like, oh my God. Now, Tiff, if you're watching this girl, I was like sizing you up like, oh, hell no. Text my friends like, this bitch is here. I can't believe it. This is so weird. Oh my God. And Tiff is the coolest. Honestly, she is so dope. Um, Make sure y'all check out her podcast. It's, um, Sip With Tea podcast. You know, she's really dope. You feel me? But anyway, let's get back into the original story. So... Yeah, I started working there in January. Um, and as time went along, you know, I thought it was a pretty cool job. I was substitute teaching at that time. So I was leaving my school that was a little more down Utica than taking the bus or a dollar cab, shooting up to Rochester and, up oh, well, like past like Sterling and Rochester and going to work there. Um, and that neighborhood is, I guess, pretty, you know, there's a lot of hood people over there, a lot of ghetto parents or whatever. It's a lot going on. I'm not judging, but that's just, that's just the type of area we were in, right? So I'm giving you a little background. So we were in like a hood area. So the parents is ratchet, the kids is ratchet. So then, you know, you got to be on your P's and Q's. You have to know how to discipline these kids. You have to know how to handle them, how to be, once it's time to be emotional, when it's time to put your foot down. And these kids would be cursing us out, talking crazy, acting wild. Like, the thing about kids, junior high kids at least, is it doesn't matter how nice you talk to them, they don't respond until you talk reckless. So I could say, could you please sit down? Can you please listen? Can you please, can you please, can you please? But it's not like, yo, if you don't sit down, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, you out here looking stupid. Can you sit down, please? Like come on you out here acting like you ain't got no common sense use that brain you got as soon as you talk like that then they respond you feel me and that's annoying i find that to be the most annoying part of teaching is that kids don't want to respond unless you're being disrespectful so um so it's like that so now my boss who honestly she she didn't know how to be a leader bossing being a boss and delegating yeah she could do that she could delegate 
but she couldn't lead us. She couldn't motivate us. She couldn't inspire us. She could not successfully get us to be our best, you know? And she was so passive with the kids that the kids would curse us out, talk crazy, be fighting, throwing things, stealing, um, just being reckless. And she would never suspend them. She wouldn't kick them out the program. We had students trying to assault us. We had students trying to assault other students and encounter after encounter, encounter. And you know, the other kids in the program their safety is being put at risk. Us as the teachers, as the counselors, we're being put at risk because I can't put my hands on a child. I can't defend myself. So if this child wants to come up to me and put hands on me, me as the adult, I'm going to have to be the one to de-escalate the situation and have to take that. And let me tell you, I'm not the one. Um, I had to restrain one of the kids once because they were getting out of hand and they were trying to fight like the one of the 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 participants and the participants older brother who was also a worker there and I was like yo this is about to get out of hand real quick and I had to restrain him and I was so scared restraining him because I'm like one he could go tell his mother another story two he's light-skinned just like me so we bruise easily so if I hold him too tight he's gonna he's gonna have marks three if I don't hold him tight enough he's gonna break loose and I don't know what he's gonna do after a while, I let him loose and he ran around the world. Then another situation. So after that happened, then there's another situation where another one of my participants is trying to fight another student. And I had to ca physically carry her several blocks back to the school. Physically. I had to sit on the floor with her in a corner store as she cried because she wanted to fight. That was a lot. That, was, that job was honestly, it was honestly a lot. And even though it should have told me patience, it was just like, I don't want to work here. Like, it was just draining. But what made it drain? It wasn't the kids' actions that made it draining. Like, that played a role. But what really made it draining is the fact that she would not discipline the kids. My boss would not take away anything from this. She would let them go on all the trips. She would let them come back to program the next day. She wouldn't have their parents coming up. And it's like... That's not how you teach kids to change their behaviors or to be responsible. You feel me? Like, yes, I understand a lot of my kids go through a lot. Like, those kids, they went through a lot within their household and within their families. And I get that 100%. But if you continually, continually let them slide by just because they went through a lot, we all go through a lot. You feel me? You have to give them that discipline. You got to help them to get strong. You feel me? You have to put your foot down and let them know that their actions aren't right. And that this is how we're going to change it. You feel me? Like, I had kids walking in and out of my class. I don't want to do this. I'm going to be part of it. Like, I didn't take it personally because I'm just here. I'm here to serve you. If you don't want to utilize what I have, then that's on you. You feel me? But, you know, so we're going through that throughout the month. She would never hear our ideas. Like, us as workers, it was like six, seven of us. We would come together as a community like as, as co-workers, and we would come up with great ideas. We would support each other. We would help each other. We would, you know, really be strong with each other. And she wouldn't, she wasn't having it. She would not accept any of our ideas. She would not try anything that we suggested, anything. It didn't matter what we were suggesting. She would not allow it. And that was so frustrating because it's like, just because an idea doesn't come from you doesn't mean it's a bad idea. You know, she did not boost the morale. She tried to separate, divide, and conquer a lot. And that doesn't work. If you have a community of workers, you should be building everyone up together. Everyone should be a unit. Everyone should work together. Probably we should be able to come together and talk ideas and do things. So when sis went on vacation, the time all them times she was going on vacation, and we had our Auntie Kwana um, delegating and helping us and building us, we... You know, we didn't even need her. We didn't need sis. Because Aunt Kwana came and she was amazing. You know, she was an amazing leader. She would hear us. Sometimes she would put her foot down. Like, she's not going to let us slide. Like, no, nah, you you going to clock in when it says time to clock in. You know, I'm not giving you extra. I'm not letting you be late. Like, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't letting us slip and slide because we was cool. You feel me? She was, so you can be a good boss and a good leader at the same time. So whenever um, our boss wasn't around, we were able to execute our ideas. 
excuse me, try new things, try to do things with the students, you know, and it worked out so amazingly, you know, so the only problem was our boss. So I say all that to say this, right? So the day I decided to quit, so during summer camp, we were doing summer camp and this lady was unprepared as hell. She was negligent. She was taking the kids swimming with no waivers no forms signed she lost the train passes so she wanted us to go into the train station in the middle of the summer and beg to get on the train she would come late every single day she would never tell us what we were supposed to do ahead of time so in summer camp is trips activities fun and she would never be around to tell us, we're like, okay, what trip are we going on? How are we getting there? What time should the kids be? Like, no information would ever be given to us. And that was so frustrating. Like, I can't, like, I like to be able to go to work and know what I'm supposed to do and get it done. You feel me? I like to come to work, do my job, and go home, period. I don't like to socialize. I don't like to be confused. I don't like people asking me questions. I don't like none of that. Right? So... To come in every day and not know what I'm supposed to be doing was beyond frustrating. So every day went like that. Me, my kids, my class that I had, they already they already knew. See, that's the thing with my boss though, is that she knew who to put in what positions because don't play with me. You ain't got to watch me. You don't need to watch me. I know what I'm doing. Tell me a job and I'm going to do it. I'm supposed to be doing creative writing. She had me doing art. She had me doing girls group. She had me doing all kinds of things. And I was just like, just, just. Just give me them like what like I'll I'll come up with my own stuff. You feel me? All the extracurriculars. Anytime there was a way to make extra hours, doing early lesson plans, doing extra lesson plans, doing different classes, I always did it. So my my summer group, they knew what it was. You know, line up, they stand in front of my room. I'll tell them good morning. They'd be like, "Oh, you hear? Good morning, Miss Bianca." You feel me? Like my kids was on point. So I'm not a bad worker. My attitude be a little crazy, but I'm not a bad worker. So. She was just like being really negligent. She was being really toxic. She made the whole work like we would be good without her. If we was working, we was at job, we good, we cool, we get our kids together, we doing our ideas, we have we know we handle things within ourselves. If the kids get out of hand, I'm like, yo, Uncle Ron, you need to come get so and so. Yo, Miss Tiff, you gotta come get this. Miss B, come get this student. You feel me? Like we will handle it. But any time that our boss was around, it was just a big, dark, toxic cloud. It was awful. It was awful. And one day, she says, okay, everybody's going on a trip. So I'm prepared for the trip. I have stuff for the trip. So then she comes in, and then she's like, no, you're not going on the trip. You're going to go upstairs, and you're going to do this, that, and a third. And I had had enough of sister friend talking to me. Like, I was some little nigga, you feel me? Like, we not, we weren't that far in age. And I was getting real fed up with her talking to me crazy. Like, you don't listen to nobody but yourself. You're never on time. You're negligent with these kids. I feel scared for them every day because you're a terrible boss. You're not a leader. You can't do nothing right. Your desk is disgusting. You don't know how to clean up after yourselves. You talk about having a healthy lifestyle for our kids, but you be sitting here drinking bottles upon bottles of Pepsi and Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper, eating McDonald's and all kinds of that stuff. You were just a big ass hypocrite and I don't respect you at all. So for her to just come in off rip and talk to me crazy, I was like, yeah, no, I've had enough. Like, that's it. Uh, I, I've had it up to here like because she used to talk so crazy. I was just done with it, bro like done with it. So Like my anxiety was really turning because I don't like confrontation But I had already let it be known that I wasn't going to take no more of her shenanigans So I felt the anxiety building up and I was like Yeah, I'm off this. I said I quit two weeks notice bye and I walked out the door now, sister bitch was already down three staff because all three of them quit. <laughs> Sis only had interns that weren't even scheduled to stay for the full day. So she was literally, was literally left with, I think, two real life workers. No, three. She was left with three people. Three people and like 50 kids? Huh. Okay. 
good luck with that y'all can't go nowhere with that so i walked out and i remember my coworker was like oh you can't throw no temper tantrums because things don't go your way ah and i blocked him i was like listen friend you young you're not even 21 yet you haven't worked as many jobs as i have so you don't know you feel me you don't know your worth as a worker i know my worth as a worker i know my worth so i'm not gonna just put up with anything period I'm not just going to put up with anything just to say that I have a job. One thing I've always known is my worth as a worker. I may not have known my worth as a girlfriend or a woman, but as a worker, I know my worth. And that job was not worth me at all. I was I had a substitute teaching job already. I had money saved up. And honestly, the same day I quit, I think through I had a I had a, an interview scheduled for friday so i think i had quit like on a tuesday or something and i remember i called my mom um after i walked to the bus stop and i was like mom i just quit my job she was talking to me crazy i was tired of being disrespected what she did was wrong she's negligent she doesn't do her job properly like i was going off and my mom was like go back and get your job back walk back and get your job back i was like sis i'm already on the bus ain't no getting your job back i'm done and that was the best thing i could have ever done Ever. I've quit jobs before, but that time, that was the best thing I could have ever done. That was, I was, I, no regrets. No regret. I will never regret that. Because some people, they would just sit like, uh, the older generation is taught to keep your head down. Yes, master, no master. Do come to work, do your job, and be somebody's bitch. That's not me. I'm a person at the end of the day. I could be your employee, but at first things first, I'm a person. Don't talk to me crazy because I get a paycheck. Not even from you. I got a paycheck from the company. Your name isn't on my check. The company's name is. So if you think I'm going to let you, somebody that get a check just like me, talk to me crazy, nah, it's not happening. I'm sorry. And I will never, I, listen, if my son come home and be like, mommy, I had to quit my job. They weren't respecting me. I'll be like, baby, what bill you need help with? I got you because know your worth as a worker. Know your worth as a person. You could never talk to me crazy and think that that's okay because you're my boss. No, that's not how that works. You get more bees with honey and I'm somebody I need encouragement. I need you to tell me I'm doing a good job. I need I need I need that affirmation. I need I need good positivity because if you hit me with negative, 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 why the hell would I come to work and do my best? Why in the hell would I come to work and do anything at all? But the bare minimum. Like like you have to be logical about that. Maybe some people work great with anger and aggression and all that. That's not me. And I feel like you should respect your workers because they're people too. Humble yourself. That's what it comes down to. Humble yourself. And I felt like my boss felt like because she was in a position and she used to talk so much like, well, I was a director for hair and I was this and I was that. And come to find out she was fired from there from doing the same stuff that she's doing here, which is being negligent, which is misusing money. Which is not doing what she's supposed to be doing for these kids. One thing about me, don't play with my kids. It don't matter where I work. Don't play with my kids. Those are my kids. You feel me? So if they're supposed to be going on trips, they're supposed to be getting prizes, they're supposed to be getting this and that. I fully expect them to be getting that because you're supposed to do it. Don't play with my kids. When you know how many times this lady promised them these trips and these different things, all for it to fall through. Do you know how those kids felt who don't have a lot going on and depend on their after school, that depend on their summer um, summer programs to provide them with things that they don't get at home, that they can't get on their own? Don't do that. That's heartless. That's wrong. That's wrong as hell. You feel me? And I was really passionate about that. And I couldn't stand by. And I wrote multiple letters to HR about my boss and documented her negligence. They, I, don't, I don't believe they did anything about it. They didn't do nothing about it. Because the last time I talked to Uncle Ron, she was still working there. So, hey, when them lawsuits start rolling, I'm going to be the first one in line. Like, um, I have documentation of this, that, and third. F fraud in documents. 
<laughs> Listen, that was horrible. It was awful. It was awful. And I'm so glad I got out of that because from there, I was able to get another job. It was less hours, but it provided me the time to then go to co-op. And going to co-op is what led me to becoming a sapist worker. And I will forever be grateful for that. You know, I went in for a digital marketing program and I ended up coming out with a counseling job. And that's okay. I love it. I love my job. I love what I do. And I would have never gotten there if I stayed in that toxic ass job. So I'm not saying quit your toxic job. But I'm telling you that you can't go wrong. And I had to argue that down to my family. Like, I ain't failed down yet. I've quit jobs. I've been fired from one. And my and the job after each time was never bad. It was never worse. It was never a downgrade. It never put me in a bad spot. It's been great each and every time. And I'm so grateful for that. I thank God for that all the time. I ain't failed down yet. Period. So know your worth as a worker. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can deal with a toxic boss. Maybe you could do that. I'm no sir. Not me. I can't do it. I know that's not my destiny. That's not for me. And I wouldn't tell somebody to do that. I'm not gonna tell nobody to just stick it out, keep your head down. Y'all don't value jobs. Y'all don't this, y'all don't that. That's what people like to say. I'm I ain't failed down yet. I valued all my jobs. They didn't value me. And I know what I'm worth. If you want to stay at your job, that makes you depressed, angry, feel like you're worthless. You do that. You could be miserable over there by yourself. Because I won't be joining your pity party. Because I'm too busy being happy at my own workplace. Test that on that. <laughs> so... That's my little story time about how I quit my toxic ass job and failed up, I guess. And she sis probably think that I wasn't going to be nothing. She probably feel like, oh, Bianca quit. This is the best job she's going to ever have. Are you dumb? Like, first of all, I'm a I was a substitute teacher. I was making more money in a day than I did there in a whole week. This was just This was just money to pay my babysitter. You feel me? Like, come on. Come on. Don't do me like that. Anybody that's had me as a worker that know I pull up and I get shit done. Period. And that's that on that. So, stay mentally whole and quit those toxic jobs. And quit them toxic people too. Throw them all in the trash.